Dear viewers, thank you for joining us today for this live Q&A um, at the 24th Arbra International Film Festival. Uh, my name is Cami Jones. I'm the lead programmer, and I am so delighted to be the moderator today for this Q&A with the director of the film, Ara Madsunian. Um, the film is called Master Eddie, and I have to say I fell in love with this movie from the very beginning. It's such an honest, thoughtful film. And of course, I fell in love with Master Eddie himself. So I'm so excited to be able to talk to Ara about uh, this film a little bit more today. So Ara, could you introduce yourself, uh, where you're from, uh, introduce your film um, to our audience? Uh, thank you, Cami. Uh, yes, uh, uh, let me start with my background. I was born in in in, uh, uh, in, in Beirut, Lebanon. I mean, to be very specific, it is the same uh, neighborhood that Master Eddie was born in, uh, and it's called Burchamut, which is a uh, you know a highly uh, populated by by uh, Armenian community. Uh, uh, so it's the, it's the, uh, the heart of the uh, Armenian diaspora, so to speak. And I was there um, until the start of the Lebanese Civil War, 1970, 76. But I had to leave the country in 77 and came to US uh, via New York. And uh, so since then I've been living in LA and residing in LA, working in LA. And, uh, so, um, and I studied filmmaking at uh, UCLA uh, Film School uh, since, and then I've always been an independent producer, director, and also I do cinematography. Uh, so, so basically, you know, I just manage my own, you know, films and, and, uh, and I've shot several films for other people. Um, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the, you know, in a nutshell, my background. All right. Um, could you kind of set up the scene for this uh, feature documentary, Master Eddie? Uh, what, where did you get the inspiration for this film and how did you meet up with Eddie? Uh, in the early 90s, I met Eddie. Obviously, I had a, I had a, you know, a, a pair of shoes to, uh, to repair. So I ended up being in his shop. And I'll tell you what, I immediately fell in love with him. Uh, uh, his, uh, his, 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 uh, his his masterful, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the work that he did or he did, uh, yes, he did, uh, uh, and also his character. I mean, I a character that is uh, it's it's not an unknown to me because uh, I've I've lived in, in among these characters back home, so immediately I felt uh, you know kind of a connection with him. Uh, very very you know uh, smart man, very. Uh, dedicated uh, to his craft and that's the the i literally i feel in love with him uh and but it took me several years uh to eventually uh make a film about him uh in the meantime i always visited him uh of, of uh, also sending many many other you know uh, customers uh, end up being very happy customers so and that's you know you know, you have to kind of know your characters first. You have to know them very well, and you have to make them feel, at, you know, at ease before even, you know, uh, hold the camera uh, in their face. So that uh, that was the that was the kind of a the start of this this uh, you know the film Master Eddie, which I shot in back in 19, uh, 1998. Uh, several years ago, but didn't have the chance, uh, didn't have the, the motivation to, or, or, or find the angle to tell his, his story. Uh, I didn't want to make a, so to speak, uh, you know, a standard documentary. I've always been a big fan of the uh, cinema verite. Uh, so, and uh, basically uh, I took the camera and I spent um, probably three months on and off uh, with him visiting him every, almost every day. And, uh, and, you know, shot, I don't know how many hours of footage, probably 10, 12 hours of footage, which eventually turned out to be a, you know, you know a little less than a, a two hour uh, feature documentary. 
I love the idea that you met Eddie by actually bringing in some shoes for him to repair. That's the best way of um, having a connection. And you did such a great job in this film of showing him actually doing his craft, mm -hmm. um, which I found really, really interesting. Um, so you said that you um, filmed it, you filmed it for a couple of months um, and it took you a while to be able to formulate an actual film out of it. Um, how did that come about? Like, did you all of a sudden wake up and realize, oh, this is what I'm going to do with this, this uh, footage or um, did it come in a different type of way for you? Well, uh, from the get go, I didn't want to make any, uh, you know, your, you know, uh, sort of a, a, a to Z uh, narrative uh, or, or documentary uh, film. Uh, I didn't want to, uh, I wanted to show some respect to his craft uh, uh, and to his, uh, he's a very sort of a, um, uh, a very ethical man, and I I wanted that to kind of a, a appear in the eventual the film, uh, and uh, didn't want to also you know, didn't want to include his uh, background uh, visuals, uh, so because it was about him totally about Eddie and and his craft. And uh, obviously, you know, luckily, and also that, you know, his environment is such a rich, visually rich environment with all the, you know, machinery and, you know, a, a hundred year old machinery that he had kept it in, you know, working as, a, as, a, as we say, this is a Swiss watch, you know, it's so everything was, in, you know, uh, uh, intact. And th that, and also I wanted to, uh, include his social uh, environment, the way he interacts with his uh, customers, clients, which he tells you know, us that he's, they're, they're not his clients, they're his friends. He treats them as his friends. Uh, also that friends that visit him on and off for a coffee or for just an, you know, a, a, you know, conversation. That, that invite, the social environment was also part of Eddie's uh, life. Uh, and that I wanted to keep that uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, intact, plus, uh, plus uh, the, the the all the detail work that he did. I want to respect that, so I want to, and, and I kept that as much as possible without me interrupting uh, his process. In fact, I did not give any directions to Eddie. I mean, there were few times. Uh, because he felt so comfortable, uh, me being uh, in his shop, in his, you know, is his working environment that obviously, you know, uh, when you see the film, he rarely uh, gives any attention to the camera. He just does his work. And I'm there just to uh, observe his, the process. And I think that's, 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 that's just the beauty of, of this sort of a, a style of, uh, you know, filmmaking or, the, you know, making a documentary. That's, uh, I, as a filmmaker, I'm not a participant. I'm an observer, and I want also the viewer uh, to be involved. Uh, you know, it's sort of a, it's a triangle between the subject, the filmmaker, and the viewer. I, I want uh, the viewer to also uh, be part of the his process. Uh, so th that's why I didn't want to interrupt him at uh, you know at all. And you know, and again, he was a such a such a, a unique character, Eddie, and and uh, and he helped me a lot you know, to bring out his his own film to 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 life. I love in the beginning of the film that you talk about the respect you wanted to give um, Eddie. Um, and you kind of just started off showing his shop and him working on some shoes. Um, and then this beautiful feral music came in and there is a moment of kind of like taking you back and kind of giving, slowing you down and appreciating what he was doing. Um, and I love that you were able to kind of give that space for him to shine doing his craft at the very beginning. And then you weave that in during out the film, but I thought that was a very powerful um, way of starting the film. 
I mean, the, the music, uh, uh, probably you've realized that it's, it's, it's not a production music. It's part of his life, is a part of his uh, everyday life. He loves music. Uh, he also played the banjo when he was a younger boy. So music was part of his, 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 his life, his, uh, you know, his livelihood. So I kept the music as it is because I didn't want to interrupt it, as I said, you know, it's because it's, it's, I'm trying to portray, portray him as truthful as possible. Uh, and, um, and then, you know, I guess also at times I was very lucky that the music played a role in, 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 in certain scenes, you know, uh, so it gave a very sort of a Zen moments while he was working. Uh, that was, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, accidents uh, in, 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 in filmmaking and art is, it, it is, is a part of the a vital part of the, the whole process. And I was very lucky, lucky with, with that uh, process. What do you feel, because it is a unique way of, uh, of filming a person, giving them that respect in the cinema, cinema verte. Uh, what were some of the challenges that you found uh, making the film in this way? I think the biggest challenge was that, you know, I was a one person production team and I was doing the camera. I was doing the, uh, uh, obviously the sound also at the same time, but also in the process while I was filming him, uh, I will always had in mind the editing process. Uh, so that's why there's, the, there's you know, I, there's a, you know, I used, you know, I made uh, quick decisions as to how, when, how to stop the, 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 the filming and, and change my angle. Uh, again, having in mind that this is gonna be edited and I just wanted to bring in, although it's a single camera, uh, but, uh, but, but, you know, by, by uh, changing my angles, uh, in, again, making the, that quick decisions, um, I wanted to give the impression that it, it's, it's more than one camera. Uh, you know, I was using more than, or I was using multiple cameras, but in, you know, in reality, this was one, one, one camera. Uh, that's, I think that's the, the biggest, uh, the, the, the challenge I had in, you know, the, during the filming. Otherwise, you know, I think I, I can say that again, I was very lucky that the entire process there went very smoothly. Um, you know, there were some technical glitches uh, in the process, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it comes part of the, uh, you know, the, the, that verite, uh, you know, uh, filming pro you know, process. Those things are important. It makes it more honest and real. Exactly, exactly. I mean, again, I was using a very, uh, you know, as I said, I was using a DV camera, which is now totally obsolete. Uh, nobody uses it, but that's the only, because I had to film him no matter what. I had to have a, you know, footage with me. And then I thought about the, the you know, eventually completing the, uh, the film uh, later on and, uh, so, yeah, those were the, the challenges, uh, technical, technical challenges. Always hard to try to do the film all by yourself, right? <laughs> it's always, but it's also very exciting, yeah. honestly, to be exactly because you're free. You're free of all other restrictions, uh, you know, having a crew, uh, for example. Also, having a crew meaning, you know, you're multiplying your, the, the number of people in, 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 the, in his shop, for example. Uh, and that would have hampered, I didn't want to interrupt his, his livelihood. Uh, and I didn't want him to perform for the camera. Uh, that was the, the, you know, that's, a, that's the biggest thing that, you know, I didn't want to have that. I want him to be in, in his natural state. And, uh, you know, it, again, it worked for me. Well, it worked for us too. So thank you for um, spending the time with him and creating this film. Um, I'm curious after you or while you were uh, filming, because you said you're always thinking about the editing process. And then after you watched the film, did you have anything that came up for you that felt different or an understanding of something that you didn't fully understand while you were filming it? Uh. 
Uh, and anyway, um, I wish I had had more time uh, gathering more footage of him. Um, and again, I didn't want to bring in his, his, for example, I mean, his, his, there's no, there's no reference to his uh, first wife, visual reference, uh, because that's, so again, by bringing that element in, uh, and I thought it would be a very, again, again you know, going to a, a sort of a standard way of making a documentary, you know, flashbacks or, or, or you know, it's a visual, I just didn't, did not want that to happen. Uh, and uh, I stuck to my uh, original idea and uh, I'd say probably 80% you know, of it, I was, uh, I achieved it. You did. Yeah. Did it make you feel different about um, maybe your experiences or the experiences of the characters that you have interacted with since living here um, in LA? Uh, can you rephrase that for me, yeah, please? Or, um, did you feel uh, or did you um, experience um, any new ideas or thoughts or understandings about um, the life of a refugee coming from Lebanon and um, you know living here as a first generation um, for you or for the people that you care about. Well, in a way, uh, it reminded uh, me history of my story also. You know, coming to the U.S. Uh, as a you know young boy uh, at the age of twenty, uh, I went through uh, more or less the same sort of an. Uh, anxieties uh, as, a, as a refugee, as an immigrant. I was not even an immigrant, I was a refugee basically. Uh, and then I, you know, uh, but, and, uh, and I felt very, uh, uh, his honesty uh, felt very close to me. Uh, so, and obviously that's, I wanted to I, portray that as, as truthful as possible. And uh, hopefully I did, you know, uh, uh, so, I think that's the first word that came up for me when I was thinking about this film is honesty. So I do believe that you captured that very, very well. Uh, if you were to, um, uh, you said that you wanted to maybe capture a little bit more film of him. Were there specific things other than maybe referencing um, his first wife that you would have liked to have captured? I wanted to capture him more in a sense that, you know, his, his living environment, his home, uh, after he leaves, after he shuts the, uh, the, the workshop down and then how he spends his time with his uh, second wife, uh, that would have been a, a, a little uh, added, I guess, quality that, that it's missing. Uh, that's that's what I wanted to the, his interaction with his second wife exactly. because both both were uh, immigrants and they hardly speak English so that their interaction uh, uh, you know how would they did they uh, went about living their life after Eddie's uh, work and her her job. So I wanted to capture that element, which, um, you know, uh, would have been a little uh, more exciting uh, if I had captured it. And the second wife was in there a little bit when they were having the open house. Was That's that? better. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, uh, the, 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 the whole film has uh, two parts. I don't know if you, it's a very loosely two parts. Uh, the first part ends with that uh, interaction with his second wife and, and the neighbors at the, the, the Magnolia Park, uh, the, I guess, uh, the Christmas uh, thing. Uh, and then the second part has also his, his aim to finish uh, a, a studio work. I mean, the, the shoe that was brought in by, from a studio nearby, mm -hmm. uh, film studio. So, so there has this two uh, type of uh, uh, loose structure, very loose structure, and then uh, hopefully that was a uh, became a little you know obvious. I don't know. Uh, was it? 
was it obvious for you or, or, or for the audience? That part, that two section? Um, you know, that doesn't come across for me in terms of seeing it in two sections. I think I saw it in a couple of different sections. Right. Yeah. With all the fades and yes, I understand that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. For me, yeah. it was when I was kind of when it was more ethereal and when it was going back to him doing his craft and then he, when he was interacting with uh, the customers who actually became his friends. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah, can, yeah. can you tell us um, a little bit about what's uh, happened to Master Eddie um, and anything about his life um, that you think our viewers would be interested in? Uh, well, uh, again, uh, when I completed the film, I visited him at home because uh, he left the shop, you know, 2015. So it was what, uh, six, five, six, seven years back ago that I, or, or later, I visited him at home. And um, mentally, he was not as sharp as he, he would be. Uh, he's appearing in the, in the film. Uh, he had lost his memory. And uh, that was for me very heartbreaking to see him that way because, you know, as far as I know, or and, and his friends and neighbors know him, he was a, a loved and loved by everyone. Uh, so that was a very breaking point for me. Um, he, he didn't recognize me to begin with. And he was surprised that, you know, uh, I had a film and he was in it. He was like, you know, when did you do this? Hmm. And I kept saying, Eddie, this and that, but he wouldn't remember. That's uh, heartbreaking. Yes, very much, very much. Um, other than that, uh, I also showed the film to his family, his wife and kids, uh, both kids from both sides. And uh, that was also a very emotional moment uh, for all of us. Uh, because uh, I showed it after he passed away. Mm. And uh, so the response from the family was overwhelming. They were so proud of, of Eddie, of their father, of their, of, of their you know, of, of, of the husband. Uh, that for me was the, 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 the ultimate moment that I had succeeded in, you know, doing a good deed. Uh, you know, uh, as always, Eddie was always uh, ready to to do his part, doing a good deed to strangers. So that became for me was a, that the ultimate moment, and then that and I was uh, totally very happy, and I still keep in touch with the family, uh, which is you know, well, his son is in, in, lives in Colorado, but two other daughters uh, from first wife, they live in LA or in nearby LA. And always also in touch with uh, uh, Sylvia, uh, his uh, second wife. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so Eddie himself never got to view it or? He did. But he didn't uh, understand. But he did not. He was totally uh, surprised that, you know, uh, there was a film about him. Oh. And in the meantime, after I was, I was done filming, uh, back in the, in the 98, he always kept asking me, so when are you going to finish the film about me? And I said, Eddie, the time will come, it will naturally happen. I'm not ready yet. So, but he always had, you know, asked me about the, about the film. But, you know, when he saw it, he didn't recognize it. I mean, when did this happen? Yeah. I have to say for the family, um, that's a beautiful gift that you gave um, them to have a uh, feature documentary of, about their father or husband. Um, my dad um, uh, had a doc documentary made about him um, uh, and it showed three days before he died. Oh, wow. um, and um, it's such a beautiful thing for myself and the rest of our family to go back to that film um, and to be able to see him, to be able to hear him, um, to see how he chuckles. Um, and uh, I just loved, uh, I just loved that the director did that for us. So I know that um, Eddie's family really appreciates this film for, um, that you made. 
And I was, I'm, I was, I'm, I'm very pr proud that I made this film about about him, Eddie. You know, so uh, I, you know, he was a very down to earth person, a very generous person. He, he'd give me so many pair of shoes. You know, he would say, "Take it." You know, no one showed up to uh, claim their their shoes, and they would give me. You know, he would give me shoes that I still have those shoes in my, you know, in my closet mm. uh, as, as a souvenir. Uh, extremely generous man, not only to his friends and, 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 and neighbors, but total strangers. The people walk in, they would ask for a piece of, uh, of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, leather, he would just give them, you know, like, you, know, you know, he would say, you know, it's sitting here, I'm not, it's not useful to me. So I would share it with other people. And uh, and also he would always undercharge people. That's we always told him, Eddie, you're undercharging people. You know what the craft that you you have, and you, the work that you're doing with your hands, it's lot, it's valued a lot more than what you're charging as far as yes. money. Yeah. And he would say, Ah, you know what? As long as I'm happy, as long as I'm I have my piece of bread and I can pay my rent, you know, I'm satisfied. I don't want anything else. That, he was that kind of a person. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I had to do an homage to him for that kind of a, 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 you know, person. He also gave his friends a lot of good advice, <laughs> 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 which I'm sure they enjoyed. Oh my, <laughs> oh my God, you know, it's amazing, right? As an immigrant, he would just, you know, he would, he knew the, the quote unquote, the law of, of this country, you know, the way he understood the law, of course. And uh, he was a funny man. He yeah. was a very funny man. Yes. Very charming. Yes. Very, very. Uh, a big loss. And his shop was in um, Burbank. Uh, he's in yeah. The shop is in Burbank. Uh, he still he sold the, the the business to a new another newcomer, uh, which I think did not succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the guy lost a lot of business because. You have to be Eddie to maintain that kind of a, a you know business. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think I don't know if the shop is still there as 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 a shoe repair shop, which I think it is, but I haven't been there for for a while, so I can't give you exact uh, information. But yes, he, you know you know ironically he sold it to a newcomer. Mm. Uh, it's interesting yeah. that I learned that he his he has three other brothers that were also uh, sh uh, in the shoe business and throughout LA as well. They were all masters like him, totally. The entire, I mean, the, the, the uh, I mean, his uncles, they they had, they had this business, you know, uh, for generations. Uh, uh, you know, not only his brothers, but you know, uncles and 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 dad also was a. A shoemaker. I mean, imagine, uh, you know, uh, working in a in that kind of an environment environment uh, since the age of nine. So you know, no wonder he said you have to be a doctor to repair this. So he called himself a doctor, you know, a professional basically. But that's the that's the lingo that it's used uh, in the in the immigrant uh, uh, you know so, you know community. Uh, doctor being the ultimate professionalism. Uh, so he was a doctor, you know, yeah. you know, he was a total doctor. And he loved the challenge of a different shoe or trying to fix something that um, the studio wanted them to make. Uh, so he was very involved in his craft and I mean, it also wasn't the, just a job. No, it's, it was not a job. You know, he, if he didn't like the, what he did, he would just dismantle it and, and do it again. Which mm -hmm. in the film, there is that scene where he doesn't like the way the shoe stands. And does it's not proper, so he just goes takes it, you know, takes it apart and 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 does it again. Yeah. Uh, also, he did a lot of work for the the equestrian community in Burbank. He supplied every. I mean, he had clients sending shoes all the way from Germany. Wow. Okay, and they wouldn't trust anybody but Eddie. And also, let me tell you, this is one thing that. Uh, it's not in the film, uh, even um, um, oh God, I forgot the year. Uh, one of the presidents 
of a US president. He had sent his bomber jacket, okay, to be fixed by Eddie. I mean, but Eddie did not even mention about this because for him, it's a job. I mean, he didn't associate himself with uh, names and, and, you know, and celebrity. For him, it was a, the main aim is to do a quality job. Yeah. So, so many, so many people that they wouldn't trust anybody but Eddie with their shoes and, and whatever the leather work. Well, it's hard to find a good shoe repair person and a master crafter in, in, in shoes. And so um, uh, I could see why people send things from as far away as Germany to him to fix. It's rare to find somebody like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's also a little bit sad, the movie, um, because of the kind of the changing of the world and the um, the not you know his son didn't want to go into the business um the world is changing so much that i don't know if we have these generational uh master craftsmen anymore or how that's gonna like when is the last one going to be around um it's kind of a changing environment um and in some ways that's very sad yeah 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 he knew, he knew that that you know uh he, for example, he always encouraged me to wear leather shoes, leather soles, because that's that says uh, there's a there's a there's a reason that you know people uh, started making leather shoes with leather soles because uh, it's it's a, it keeps your posture straight. Uh, it's not, you know because uh, you know the, the 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 energy that you get from the ground uh, into your body, it it goes through. I mean, leather shoes. And plastic, it's not the same. Hmm. As one of the clients, uh, his customer says, you know, uh, uh, these days, you know, a lot of people don't even know where the where milk comes from. Hmm. So that kind of a, so he's, uh, I mean, I think that generation is it's a it's a thing of a past. Uh, and and these days we all wear shoes for about you know two months and then we get rid of it and we buy a new one. Uh, so. So shoes for him was, uh, he carried your body in, in entire yourself. I was standing on those shoes. So it better be good quality shoes, leather shoes so that you can, you know, uh, you can be a healthy person. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, I think times have changed and obviously changing rapidly. And I don't know if we're gonna go back to, uh, you know, to the past. If we're going forward with the, you know, I think we, we're looking for, into a lot of uh, a fast satisfaction, fast gratification, uh, and um, and which for him that was not part of his life or lifestyle. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I never had uh, leather shoes explained to me like that, um, but I guess from what I'm hearing is that you can be more grounded. Um, and um, healthier if you wear leather shoes. So thank you. Taking his advice myself. <laughs> well, we're gonna listen to Eddie, right? He, uh, I started writing down all the comments he was making. Um, uh, and he's, he's very funny um, in his comments and, and very straight on and honest about how he reacts to um, other people and situations. Um, are you, uh, when we uh, were kind of checking before the, um, Q&A started, you let me know that um, you had entered and um, was part of the first um, film festival. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about that first film? You had mentioned that you were still, I think, a student at the time at UCLA. I was a, still a, a student at UCLA. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly, uh, 25 years ago, 24 years ago. Uh, um, I was yeah, I was still at, uh, at UCLA when I submitted my first film, a short film, which also had been uh, around festival circuits uh, all around the world, uh, The Pink Elephant. Uh, it was a, a very personal experience. Uh, it was my story, uh, you know, uh, about a, a bunch of friends living in, in uh, during the, uh, the, the Civil War times. Uh, so that I in turned into a, a screenplay. Uh, which uh, you know became successful in the fe festival circuits, 
and uh, and also it's available on YouTube. Anybody can go in and watch it for free. I made it available to to the public. Uh, so if, hopefully, eventually, I will also make Master Eddie available to the public after it's it's you know it's I'm done with the festival circuits. Uh, so I'd like to share uh, my work with uh, with you know with uh, whoever is interested. Sounds very similar to um, Eddie. Um, yes. I, yeah, so I, I love it. I don't know if you kind of wore off in him or he wore off on you, but um, that is such a generous um, idea. And I was, my next question was going to be where could we see Pink Elephant? So now yeah. I know on YouTube and be able to yeah. see for free what's better, right? So thank you yes. for that. Yes. Um, were, are there any projects that you're working on now that you can share with us? I am working, I'm in a process of uh, 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 conceptualizing uh, my next project. Uh, I'll just put it in one line of probably is a, it's about it's a contemporary uh, story in relation to past to, uh, to the past. Okay, that's all I can say for now because I haven't I haven't you know uh, I haven't found exactly how I want to do it. Is that usually how it um, kind of works for you? It's just kind of a process, and it can uh, evolve over time, change. It's, yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm a, in a, I'm in a little bit a slow person as far as when it comes to uh, 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 you know realizing a project. I'll take my time because I have no pressure as far as uh, you know uh, uh, going forward with with the project. So first and foremost, I have to be satisfied, I mean, I have to satisfy myself. And then the public comes uh, secondary. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully next year I'll be, I'll, I'll start shooting the, the project. Well, we would hope you enter in uh, the, the Arbor Film Festival when you uh, are finished with that film. Thank you, I will. You can be I a three timer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you had mentioned in the very beginning that you really enjoy the cinema verte style. Um, were there any other um, styles or films or directors that kind of influenced kind of where you are today? Uh, I like documentaries a lot, uh, although I mean, I, I like narrative films, uh, you know, equally. Uh, I think, uh, as far as the 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 uh, uh, fiction is concerned, uh, you know, I've, I'm highly, very much influenced by Italian cinema, uh, by the, the the masters of Italian cinema. Uh, so, but also as 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 the, with this film, uh, you know, uh, going. Um, Sometimes without any pre preconceived ideas, uh, it brings a lot of wonders uh, because you're not limited. You're not limiting yourself with a with a script, uh, with a certain approach. Uh, you let the you let the the moment, uh, the story, uh, you know, to unfold as you're filming, and that's that that approach for me. Uh, it suits my character. Uh, and my my approach to filmmaking, and I, I would like to continue this verite style filmmaking. Uh, again, depends on the, the subject, of course. But um, yes, the Italian cinema. Were, it's uh, you know, we grew up in back home uh, with that that kind of a cinema. Uh, uh, mostly Italian cinema is uh, you know because that's this the way we saw uh, the. the the Italian cinema, it was very close to our community sense of uh, the sensibilities. Uh, so that's that's why, and also it was, you know, widely available uh, back home, back in Lebanon, you know, as opposed to, uh, you know, of course, American films also widely, they were uh, available. So, so we were, I think, um, personally, I was influenced by by universal cinema, I mean, so to speak, uh, the cinema in general, uh, and uh, 
And per subject, you choose your own uh, style of filmmaking. And hopefully uh, we'll see what happens with the next one. I don't know, I haven't, I haven't decided yet. Um, I know we're kind of uh, running down on time, but I would like to ask you, if you were to give some advice to new filmmakers, um, what would that be? Just one advice, be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself, that's it. Don't follow, don't follow anybody, just be yourself. Because after all, you know, what is art? Art is an, you know, an expression of, of who you are and how you see things. And uh, unless you want to do a, you know, you want to go to a commercial side of the filmmaking, for example. But if you're an, uh, an independent filmmaker or you want to be an independent filmmaker, stick to your own guts, gut feeling. That's the best route I can, I mean, I can, that's the best advice I can give. Yeah, be authentic. And absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, it certainly came across in how you filmed uh, Master Eddie, which I said um, when we started, I really fell in love with this movie. I watched it several times. Um, I love the friendship. I love the, I always love watching things and how they're made. And um, uh, Eddie just had the humor and heart. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Before we end, is there anything else you would like to share either about the film Master Eddie or your own work? Uh, I just want to say thank you to ARPA that he they gave me the opportunity to uh, exhibit the film. Uh, and uh, okay, be careful. There's an animal approaching <laughs> the camera. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> we don't and, get to see it. <laughs> uh, no. He will, he will, she will show herself now. And uh, all right, but yeah, no, but I will, you know, I'm very thankful to ARPA that is in giving uh, me and a lot of filmmakers the opportunity to, again, exhibit their films. Uh, uh, and I wish ARPA all the best. And, and hopefully the, the, we will all celebrate the 25th uh, anniversary of ARPA together. Yes, that's what we're hoping to have an in-person 25th anniversary of the Arbor International yeah. Film Festival. And um, thank you again for the movie um, uh, that you created of Master Eddie.